So this is the next update on the 2007 120 230,000 Ks. This is the engine out. Obviously got the uh, manifolds and a few things off cleaning up those components. And we're awaiting the delivery of an engine. Oh look, here it is. Right, so we've got an engine here. This is how a new long motor comes, people. And this is why we recommend it, right? Bloody awesome. So it's actually sealed. It's got the valve covers on. It's got the valve cover, not the covers. I'm looking at the injectors, you know, plural. Uh, it's got the valve cover on. It's got the injectors in. It's got, look, it's got the nozzle seals in there. They're all taped up. It comes with fuel pipes, okay? So uh, they're normally strapped on the side. We've just taken those off. Now we've got to get everything cleaned up and swapped over from the other engine to this one. Have a look at this baby. Everybody's excited when, a, when the engine turns up, right? So this is how it turns up. Obviously quite a lot of other gaskets and bits and pieces and O-rings and stuff we replace all the way down and the sump's on. So it's not half a long motor, quality, made in Japan. All right, so let's have a look a little bit closer at this engine, have a look at a few things. Bit of interesting information. You know, these guys, these engineers, Toyota in Japan, they've made things idiot proof on these engines. And just think, these were designed 20 years ago. So the old problem with valve covers was, people would over tighten them, you know, and they they could damage or squash the gasket. But see, this is what I want to demonstrate. See, there's like sleeves in there, crush tube sleeve, whatever you want to call it. And once, unless you're crazily over tightening, squashing that steel tube into the alloy, that has the whole gasket sit at the right height all the way around. Now when you do have these valve covers off, and we're not taking this one off for any reason, but the only place you need the RTV, the specification by the book is four little dobs. One is right there at the top of that half moon, right? One there, that's two, one, two. So they've actually put a bit too much here, but it's not bad. And at each side of this hump here, right? So again, so you'd go one, two, You'd make these two one, and one little dob at that bottom corner there as well. And my money's on, you could probably get away without it, but that's to be sure, to be sure. Nowhere else on this valve cover is there, or should there be any RTV silicon? And yes, that gap is normal, because it is what's required. You can see the crush tube, I hope you understand what I mean. So underneath that bolt there, if you watch our other videos, you'll have seen it anyway. But underneath that bolt is a tube. And basically, the specification is nine newton meters. And I've said it before, it wouldn't really matter if it was nine, 12, or 13. Stick to about the nine or 10. Because once that crew tube in there makes contact, that's it. So although the engine comes complete, there's a lot of components to swap over. Starting off, as you can see around here, at the front, the water pump, the, the tensioner bracket goes over the top there. So your alternator and aircon compressor, the aircon compressor obviously stays in the car, but the alternator over this side obviously the inlet oh, sorry the exhaust manifold of course um, so new exhaust manifold gasket they're about 50 bucks on their own 50 60 dollars we use the turbo kit there's a kit for about 80 bucks and it's got all the gaskets for the turbo What's happening over here the kit um, comes with a number of gaskets from memory it's about 10 gaskets and we change over all every gasket where any pipes come in and out so that all starts fresh you don't want any leaks okay so over this side of the engine um, this heater pipe here you need a gasket for under there the thermostats in here now quickly on thermostats you can replace the thermostat they're only 20 or 30 bucks but 99.9 I mean literally 999 plus out of a thousand thermostats in these engines work really well and I have replaced a few thermostats and I have had thermostats that read the wrong temperature at idle, a couple of degrees out. So I actually prefer to use the old one if there's nothing wrong with it. That way you're not getting caught, in, caught out replacing one and then you end up a couple of degrees out and you've got to do it again because they're a real pain to access down there once the engine's together. So a new O-ring for the thermostat. Okay, working our way round over at the front here. Obviously we need to take the, uh, the cam gear off and put the plastic backing plate in there. They, don't, they no longer come with that. The water pump's on there, which is really good. Have to swap over the uh, crank sensor, which goes in a hole just down here. 
So the harmonic balancer has to come off the other engine and get installed here. The seal will be already installed behind there. You know, you've got the vane and the vacuum pump here, new O-rings for those, and the supply pump, yeah, so the vane and the vacuum down the bottom, supply pump goes on the back here. Other sensors here, O-ring, these O-rings you can generally reuse them or you can just get one out of your kit if you think it's gone hard. Put a bit of molly coat on the on the hole or on the O-ring. Over this side, of course, your whole inlet manifold has to come off. That gets cleaned up, all new inlet and E-jar gaskets. Here's your oil cooler. This is where your oil filter goes and there's coolant flowing through there to help cool the engine all down. So one of the first things we do is obviously uh, I've got a couple of people on the job stripping components off one engine and so things like the glow plugs you could reuse the glow plugs we don't see problems with 1kd glow plugs but you know if you're spending this sort of money who's going to reuse the glow plugs right so we've got new glow plugs to go in the engine it is one of the components that doesn't come with the engine which it's a bit surprising some things that do and some things that don't come with the engine uh, so we're going to put a little bit of anti-seize on those and uh, basically they will go in the holes. That's one of the first jobs. This video is not to show you how to swap a whole engine. It's just to share some information and let you know some of the things that are involved. If you let the engine go without checking the oil pickup, without having the injectors changed, if you end up in that worst case scenario situation, this is some of the things that are involved. So back over to the old engine, obviously, as we said, the exhaust manifold's off, uh, the turbo's off. We just uh, removed the heater bypass pipe, which will be about to get swapped onto the other engine. Next thing will be the thermostat and the thermostat housing cover here, the engine mount bracket. This side seems pretty straightforward, then it's just get the exhaust and the turbo back on. There is a vacuum line that runs all the way around, this one here, to this side for the engine mount. You can see the bolt for it up on the back of the head there comes all the way around and there's a few 10 mils there on top of the oil cooler and just showing you following it through so if anybody's obviously working on one of these and they need to it comes back around here right? okay and then of course it splits off up here I'm not going to tell you where every single one goes but at least you can look at this footage if you need to if you're working on an engine swapping an engine you're wondering where it all where does it all go type thing, right? So there's your TPC, your three-way, a couple of those there. In this footage, hopefully you'll be able to see what's going on. So one of the next things over this side, that 12mm will come out, disconnect the vacuum lines up here, whatever, just to take this whole uh, stay assembly off the engine, swap the vacuum lines over, as I said, the two pumps from here onto the other engine, and the oil cooler, which is this whole um, alloy part here. That uh, heater bypass pipe and the engine mount off the other engine going on to the new one. Ah, now they're being tight asses, Captain Toyota. Have a look at this, right? So we used to get these engines and the backing plate would be on here, where it's behind the timing belt assembly, right? And you know it's been on there because you can see the RTV, the flat area, right? But they take it off. Bloody rip-offs. Alright, we're going to have a look in this new engine. That's a coolant area. This is the EGR exhaust gas. The port where the exhaust gas has come through the head to the EGR cooler. Cylinder one, port and valve. Cylinder two. It's the last time you're gonna see it quite that clean. Well, it was number one cylinder actually, two on each cylinder of course. That's number two, and number two, number three, looks good. Number four, these are all taped up, but we'll just maybe get the compressed air and give it a quick, quick blow just to make sure there's nothing in there. Can't quite get that one happening right. Oh, I'm in the wrong hole, he's in the wrong hole, man. Keep going, there you go. That'll work better. All right. Cool. And the oil cooler off. And a new gasket to go on the other end. Yeah, the pan. This is the old one. That's your water. Okay, water's clean, no problem. That's your EGR 
port. Notice it's not caked up because it's dry exhaust gases, it's not oil. Your intake has a slight amount of oil from the crankcase ventilation system, but it makes the exhaust, all the crap from your dirty old flogged injectors that aren't burning clean, makes the soot. All right, so clean injectors help reduce this also. All right, and less EGR flow. EGR is the problem, exhaust gases, look at that mess. All right, see down to that port. Have a look at the back of the valves light. Yeah. Ugh. Getting the new gasket in place so the uh, oil cooler can go on the new engine. You put it around the right way, I'll help, won't it? Yeah. yeah. There's also another little o ring on this blank here that needs to be, well, it doesn't need to be, but should be replaced. So we take all the tape off, just give it a clean up and all the new o rings, bit of molly coat type thing and bada bing. Got that oil cooler on yet or what man? Yeah. You haven't even got this off this engine yet. What have you been doing? I want to keep on this thing. Take the thermostat, that's the hole at the top. What did you say? Do something useful? Okay, I'll take the tape off here for you. Right? Oh, it won't come off. How do I get it off? This is like uh, really stuck. I've just seen one like that. Is that like rust and everything? Right. We don't care about the seal or the block. That's why we're doing it this way. We want to look after the thermostat because it's had good Toyota cooling in. It's clean like new. It works like new. So we're going to keep the thermostat. See what it says? 92 degrees. And you'll see about 93 on your scan tool at idle. That's quite sticky there, isn't it? 82. Noisy guy over the other side. He's finally only doing some work. Hey, uh, I, what was I saying when I said 92? It's not 92, it's 82. This is a 1KD, <laughs> not the old, back in the uh, old days of the old Fords and that. They're in the 90s and stuff like that. Anything over 100, you were cooking it, kind of thing. Yeah. So 82, it says on the thermostat, that's when it opens. And on your scan tool, you'll see 93. By the time the coolant gets from this point of the engine around to where the sensor is, on the front of the head, that's what you see, basically. So we're going to get this back on, the thermostat and housing, and then the exhaust manifold and turbo can go on. That's it for this video, guys. That's your next update. This is, we'll call, what's this, part eight? I can't remember, we're up to it. We'll add it into the playlist. If you watch this video first, then you probably should watch the seven that go before it. It's in a playlist on our channel called, I think it's called 2007 120 Prado, 230,000 Ks or something similar. So go and check that out. Please give us a thumbs up now if you got some information and liked what we're doing. And uh, yeah, turn the subscribe and turn the bell on so you don't miss the next important bit of information. All this information is universal in a lot of ways where you can use it on a lot of other vehicles. Okay, good mechanical information. Thanks for watching guys. Bell on, subscribe, thumbs up. See ya.